Next, it's time to place the gel into the gel tank. The gel tank is a box with an electrode wire running across the bottom of each end. This allows the current to pass which will separate the nucleic acid fragments. Put the gel on the platform in the gel tank in the correct orientation. Remember that nucleic acids are negatively charged, so they'll run through the gel towards the positive electrode. The connector to the positive electrode is coloured red, and the connector to the negative electrode is coloured black. Add buffer solution to the reservoirs at each end of the gel tank. Keep adding buffer until the liquid is about 2 mm above the surface of the wells in the gel. This will make the gel easier to load and ensure the appropriate current runs through the gel. You'll be able to see the wells more easily during loading if the gel tank is on a dark background. Before loading nucleic acids into the wells of a gel, you need to add coloured loading buffer to the samples. Different coloured dyes can be used, but one that's commonly used for this purpose is bromophenol blue. The loading buffer is made up of dye and a glycerol or phycol solution. The dye colour helps to visualise the loading of the samples into the wells and helps to keep track of the migrating samples. The glycerol or phycol makes the samples heavy so they sink to the bottoms of the wells. Ensure the loading buffer and the sample are mixed so the solution has a uniform colour. Arrange labelled tubes containing samples in the same order that they'll be loaded into the wells. If there are more wells than samples, avoid using the outermost wells. Samples loaded on the edge of a gel tend to run less consistently than those loaded closer to the centre. The volume of sample loaded into the wells will depend on the capacity of the well. 10 to 20 microliters is typical. Before you pipette the sample into the well, make sure there's no air bubble at the end of the tip. If a bubble is present, gently push down on the push button until the air bubble is gone. Since the wells are rectangular, keep the pipette parallel to the row of wells when loading the samples. This orientation reduces the possibility of accidentally stabbing the walls of the wells. The tip of your pipette should be just inside or just above the well, but not touching either side or the bottom of the well. Slowly and gently load the sample into the gel, being careful not to blow air into the well once the sample's been expelled. Each time a new sample is loaded, use a new tip. When you've taken up a sample, move the tube it came from so you can keep track of where you are. Load the sample into the next well. When you've finished loading the samples, don't move the gel tank. This could knock the samples out of the well, causing sample contamination. Close the lid of the gel tank and attach the leads both at the tank and the power pack the correct way round. Set the appropriate constant voltage. This will create an electrical current through the buffer and the gel, starting the process of size separation of the nucleic acid fragments. You should be able to see bubbles rising from the negative electrode. After a few minutes, the dye, and therefore the nucleic acid fragments, can be seen to migrate from the wells into the gel, showing that the process is working. Once the fragments have separated sufficiently, it's time to visualise them. This is done with the aid of chemicals which were added to the molten gel before it was poured. Cyber green dye can be used, but the best and therefore most commonly used chemical is ethidium bromide. These chemicals stick to the nucleic acids and fluoresce under ultraviolet light. Cyber green is safer but less sensitive than ethidium bromide, which is a strong mutagen. In order to have a permanent record of the fragment separation on the gel, you need to take a photograph. 
This is done by placing the gel on a UV illuminator inside a box which also contains a camera. The illuminator is switched on and the gel image is displayed on a computer screen. The image can then be saved as a digital file or printed out. When heating an agro solution, it's important that a loose top is placed on the container. If the top is too tight, there can be dangerous pressure buildup within the container which can cause the container to break. When making an agarose gel, don't leave the gel solution unattended while it's heating in the microwave oven. A solution that's heated for too long will lose water, increasing the agarose concentration of the final gel or even burning the gel mixture. Don't remove the comb from a gel before the gel is fully set. That will cause the walls between the wells to be destroyed and the gel will be unusable. Take care not to damage the wells when loading your samples. A damaged well can allow the sample to leak out and may cause contamination of other wells. It can also cause nucleic acid fragments to migrate unevenly. Make sure you don't load air into the wells along with your samples. Air can cause samples to be lost from the well into the buffer solution and can also cause contamination of neighbouring wells. Another mistake that can be made when loading a gel is to load the sample too quickly. This will also cause the sample to flow out of the well. Once you've loaded your samples, take care not to move the gel. Even a small movement can cause sample loss and contamination.